sorry, this webinar is called How Renderings Can Increase Your Sales. And I'm going to show you some of the ways that has, has helped myself and other designers who I've had the opportunity to work for. Uh, first of all, I would really like to thank Ivy for putting this together and letting me present this to all of you. Um, I'm not sure about you, but Ivy has completely changed my life and my career. Um, it has provided me a community of all of you where somebody who is just starting out on their own, uh, it's, it's awesome to have. I've previously worked in formal architecture firms where I've got a large amount of designers that I can bounce things off of, including school and everything like that. And having all of you to do that with, I've learned so much just on the design side and then collaborating with other designers and helping them bring their vision to light. Um, I've learned a lot about finishes and those sorts of things that, you know, um, my background is central to, um, but it, I'm going to introduce myself and my background a little bit more. Um, but I love working with all of you and I love learning from all of you. And I can only thank Ivy for all of that. So thank you very much. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Kelly. Uh, as you know, if you read my bio, um, I have lived up and down the eastern seaboard. And uh, the house on your left is the house that, if you know country music, that is the house that made me. Uh, my grandparents built it. It sits on Sacandaga Lake in the Adirondacks of New York. And they built it in the 60s. And it is the one place I have grown up going to consistently every year of my life. And it has single-handedly been the structure that made me want to go into architecture. Um, which is what I have my degree in. I hold a Master of Architecture degree from Savannah College of Art and Design, and I graduated there, and I proceeded to move from Savannah to Philly to Saratoga. Um, before that, I uh, lived in, was born in Fort Myers, Florida, and uh, grew up in Ellicott City, Maryland, where I graduated um, from high school in Catonsville. So I've been all over. Um, the dogs down in the left hand corner those are my two dogs walter and theo um, at this point that's the extent of my mommyhood um, but they're the ones that keep me very active if you hear any barking it's going to be the red one all the way to the right so and that's theo um, and then up in the right hand corner is my whole family um, including my husband on our wedding day uh, he is an army officer and which is what brought me to Belton, Texas, um, and how I was introduced specifically to Chief Architect. Um, they, prior to working, uh, moving to Belton, my time in Saratoga, um, I worked for an architecture firm. So, and then the picture down um, towards the middle at the bottom is my husband and I after he came from home from a year-long deployment in Kuwait. And, I had to include that because that time, despite my moving and working in different cities before that, it really kind of pushed my buttons and it really got me to really think about where I wanted my life to be and um, who I could be on a professional side on my own. And the people here and the community that I've gotten to know has been fantastic. So. And then the picture of the rose with the bee is because I love gardening. It's my primary stress reliever. And that was a bee that I found just literally asleep or drunk or I don't know what it was, but um, one morning. So I had to take a photo of it and it, it's gorgeous. So uh, anyways, uh, so specifically, why do I use Chief Architect? Well, First of all, it is both PC and Mac compatible. And if you notice when I was logging in, I am an avid Mac user. Um, I've previously worked on PCs. They're the go-to for the architecture industry, uh, generally because you know, for the longest time, AutoCAD wasn't available on Macs. And now Revit is only applicable on PCs unless you have parallels, which can take up a decent amount of bandwidth. And if you're running 
renderings like I do or like Chief Architect, which is um, decent, decent, um, not decent. It's an awesome software, obviously. Uh, it um, It's just great. So secondly, it's highly intuitive. Uh, so pretty much you put a wall in there and you get a bunch of different layers. It is something that traditionally I'll go into this in more extent as well. Uh, you have to do a lot of math and do a lot of things when you're working in specifically, let's say AutoCAD LT. Um, Chief Architect really kind of streamlines that for you. So you do have to do a lot of checking still, obviously that's our job, but it really helps you put a lot of dimensions in and you can set up your walls with drywall and insulation and all those sorts of things. So they're all taken into account for you. Um, and as, as it states below in the next bullet, it streamlines the process. So everything is in one place. So within that one model file, so that single file that you're opening up and you are drawing everything in and modeling it in, you're going to have your interiors. You're going to be able to have your exterior if that's what you work in. Um, you're going to be able to do stud plans if you get that detailed. Um, the rendering, or it's actually a standard view that I took for um, one of my consistent clients who's amazing to work with. And uh, this is for Jennifer, and this is for a fireplace. And this is in a full ray trace. I will actually show you how to set that sort of thing up before that. Um, but as I said, this is a standard view. So the next bullet is multiple rendering platforms in one place. So within Chief Architect, you actually have the ability to have the same view be presented in multiple different viewport uh, setups. So for instance, this is a standard view. Ray trace is the one that you render and it looks very realistic. Then you're also able to do stuff that looks like watercolors or it's called, I'm pretty sure it's called glass house where you can actually, people can see through the rooms. It's kind of like a line drawing. Uh, then you can do just standard technical illustration drawings. It's, it's great. Uh, so if you don't want your client to get real caught up in finishes yet, uh, the technical stuff um, and not showing the tile quite yet if you're trying to push built-ins or something like that can be amazing. So, so before I was introduced to Chief Architect, uh, we were, the firm I was working for did everything in AutoCAD, uh, we, other than sketching. So and we'd use Revit as a rendering, but we didn't use the full capacity of Revit's capabilities until after I left. So this shows you a millwork drawing that I was working on when I worked there. And you'll see that below that, you can see the AutoCAD floor plan and how I'm basically drafting it so I can figure out the molding profiles and how everything works together. and. I remember doing that and having to take in the half inch drywall and all those things into account while I'm drawing it in pencil. And even then you, you're not necessarily, you have a higher possibility of error. So from those sketches, we would then bring them into millwork drawings. So this, uh, this is a basic millwork drawing that um, the firm I did, did for that same fireplace. So this is the level of detail that would be drawn into AutoCAD and every line, every profile, all of those things inspected out. And even then the client was still not fully able to really grasp how large and beautiful this would be um, because it's two dimensional. So what's the next step after you do this? Um, you send it to the trim guys. Well, all of this was being drawn after the construction had started. And um, so in many cases, because it hadn't been fully developed prior to bid, you have a higher possibility of change orders. So not to say that this that happened with this project in particular, 
But it's happened when I worked for a design build firm because some things weren't completely developed all the way. Then the client, once it was constructed um, or the subs were on site, said, oh, no, 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 I didn't realize it was like that. I don't like that. Can we change it? And boom, that's more money that comes out of their pocket. And as an interior designer, that's money that comes out of your budget from being able to make it that much better. I actually remember us the client saying, eh, I don't know if we want to spend $500 on those bookcases. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, are you serious? This is what makes the room. But so this is the final photo afterwards. And I actually remember showing up. I was anticipating for the mantle and everything to be all satin white, um, including the part up above, um, which is something that having in, in chief architect and being able to add renderings to your drawings if you want to, that just reaffirms things for the contractor when they're on site. So in the end, this ended up being absolutely gorgeous. The client loved it and it really added to the room. But it did, it was a little bit more tedious. It wasn't as streamlined. And uh, there was a lot more detail that had to be taken into account. Um, if you actually look at the photo, you'll see that uh, you can see the crown molding above the door threshold and how it goes slightly over so that the trim work what reveal would turn. Um, those are little things that you actually would catch in uh, Chief Architects. And that's one of the reasons why this company, this firm that I worked for, went to a software similar. Uh, they went to Revit, which is extremely high powered. And, but for most of us, we don't need um, that level of detail. So, so how does Chief Architect help my design business. So specifically, this will give you an idea. This is an interior elevation uh, that I was able to take from a chief architect model that I will actually walk you through later and we'll play with the model so you can see how I uh, assign textures and make textures and do those sorts of things. But uh, you'll see that you can get very similar level of detail. And this is blown up so that you guys can see it, but I have markers and call outs and all those sorts of things with it. And it's very easy. It's you, you plop the um, cabinets in and you can set the cabinet door styles, the height of your drawers. You can decide if you want your cabinets to have feet or millwork or um, any of those things. And you can draw soffits. So this room was, uh, this is for an addition and renovation in Plymouth, Michigan and it was a small salt box house. So the idea was we were gonna take out walls um, of the dining room, but I wasn't sure if they were load bearing. So I wanted to take into account into the design. So that's where those soffits are in the case that there needed to be beams in the future. Um, so to think about it, how long would it take you to design it, draft it into AutoCAD and then take that in and then you'd still work with a cabinet um, installer and designer as well. So this really helps the process. Um, and the contractor, I actually sent this model to the contractor when we were getting bits for it and he was able to walk through and get the full understanding of what we wanted. Uh, you're also able to do even more detail. So this was in the model, I designed it so that when you walked from the dining eating area into this office, there was a thick threshold. And I put two doorways between there and ran bookcases through it. And I was able to present that. And there's bookcases on the other side of the doorway. So specifically, it's helped my business. Um, I've been working on it, and if any of you logged into the Facebook account, you've probably seen me asking quite a few questions uh, about restaurants and outdoor furniture and all those sorts of things. Well, this gives you a preview of what I've been working on. There's two rooms specifically that I can really show you before and afters at this point. So room one is a reception room. It's the image on the left. and 
Room two is just a part of the restaurant. It's a almost 20,000 square foot restaurant. It's massive. And pretty much if you can get an idea from the photo, it more or less looks like a bachelor bait shop at the moment. And everything's black, um, very bright, bright, bold colors. And uh, they really wanted to bring more of a beachy Key West feel to it. So, so this is to show that generally you start a project by establishing your client and the perspective of what the project is. So what are the parameters? What are you looking for? What's the client's budget? What, what are those sorts of things? Once you establish that, then generally um, you produce mood boards, design concepts, or sketches. So I'm sure your mood boards look far snazzier than these, but these are just meant to represent this. So room one, you'll see some of the finishes that I selected were um, vinyl grass cloth. That's the rug that's going in. You won't see that. It, we're waiting till the project's finished. And then we put these beautiful Korean company oyster circle chandeliers. And then these are this is the furnishings that I spec'd out for the restaurant. Uh, the client's gonna hold off for those particular um, items until the rest of the place is finished just so that he can use the money there. Um, but this gives you an idea of, you know, that's your next step. So what do you do from there? Well, when you have chief architect, you're actually able to model the whole room. So that's what I did. So these are two renderings that I did to show my client. And I put the entire restaurant, all 20,000 square feet, into the computer. And this was a client that I had actually been working with for about a year. And I kept doing sketches, I kept walking him through things, I kept showing him pictures. And finally, I was just not hitting it. So I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna sit down and I'm gonna model it and I'm gonna design in it and I'm gonna walk him through it. I did it. And I sat down, walked him through the space and he looked at it, called over all of the managers in the restaurant within that meeting. And he then turned to me and said, I love it, figure it out, keep going, let's take it to permit. So that's the next process. So what do you do, what can you do with chief architect after you've drawn all that in? And these are the millwork drawings or the interior elevations that I actually did from that model. This is room one. And I designed it so it had a bunch of faux beams or collar ties that went throughout the room. It had a very, if you can see, a very awkward ceiling vault in it. So the idea was give it the illusion of a flat ceiling with the barrel vaults, or not barrel vaults, with the um, collar ties. So this is all using the exact same model that I rendered prior. So all of this information is in there. It just came down to sending it to layout, putting some notes on it. And um, a few of the things like for this style of elevation, I actually took it into um, CAD detail, which is an availability and I deleted rooms and everything. So you have more of that formal section cut view um, for interiors. This is, uh, the millwork and the fireplace detail that I designed for room number two. It was, if you notice in the last picture, they literally retrofitted a giant um, metal pipe basically that uh, ran all of the heat up through it and they wanted to hide it. So this is uh, what I designed and I was able to provide his on-site contractor and they were able to build it. Um, using this detail. And all of this is in chief. I actually modeled the fireplace in a completely separate model, exported it, and um, as a different file type, as a file that reads it as furniture, imported it in as furniture, and now I can use it for other models. So it is very helpful. And this is where both of the projects currently are. So you can see uh, how room one uh, was able to develop and the client actually, his on-site contractor built all those full beams. He did all of the trim work, everything. And I actually remember walking in one day and he said, I can't figure out how to hang these beams. And he said, oh, the details right here. I opened the pages up and he was able to see it 
and to top it, if they had any questions, I was able to bring my computer and show them the model in the interior so that they could see exactly what my design vision was. Um, and then this is the other room. They were able to put beadboard up, they painted the walls, and they put the fireplace cap on it. So the chief architect completely streamlined this project for me, and it has since then. So this client, whenever he gets an idea and I want to be able to say, eh, I'm not quite sure if that's what you want to do or that's great, but let's develop a bit more. I just take the model and I develop that area and I can sit down and show him hey, this is why I don't think it's going to work out, or this is great. Do you want me to detail it? And let's figure out how to make it work. And it's saved me so much time, so much disappointment. And to top it off, I've been told by many people um, that uh, I'm the first designer he's hired in 10 years that uh, can keep up with him. So it really helps. So here are some other renderings of the restaurant and i want to make a point that this is super helpful for e-designers uh because if you think about it if your clients are able to provide you the dimensions then you can just take them and show them all of this they're able to walk through their rooms they're able to see the finishes um and decide hey you know I'm looking at it and that couch is maybe a little bigger than I anticipated. Can we find something that's maybe a little shallower or um, I wanted something bigger. I want that cozier feel. So it really, really helps the house in Plymouth, Michigan to give you an idea. I flew up there, did the existing condition takeoffs, like the dimensions. And then I flew down here and everything else was done between Belton and Michigan, and I would just send her the files. And I'm gonna send you all a link um, towards the end that you can all play with. And you'll, uh, you'll be able to see what I'm talking about with your client being able to really walk through the space. And you don't have to be there. You don't have to define exactly where they view and where they don't. They can zoom in and out and see all those sorts of things. Uh, this is another rendering of that same room. So it just shows you the level of detail that you're able to get from Chief Architect with everything in the model. And this is an addition onto the restaurant. I wanted to make sure that um, you understood that this isn't just an interior software. This has the capacity to do architecture as well and exterior spaces and framing and all those as well. So what's the difference between standard view and ray trace? So this is the model I'm about to take you to. So for your reference, this is a standard view. And the reason I'm showing you the difference is because I've had clients that I've sent them the ray trace and they said, holy cow, I didn't even know that that was available. And so that's, that's what I'm gonna show you how to do today is the ability to take this same shot and turn it into this. Uh, where it's more developed, uh, the textures are clear, the colors are obvious, and you're able to really see the metallics and the reflections and how the light plays off of the room. So follow me to the model. Alrighty, first off, this is a fully developed model in Chief Architect. It is, uh, you can see, it's roughly what you could see in the in a floor plan, but you're seeing all of the entourage, you're seeing all of the furniture, the flowers, everything like that. So if you were to, let's see if I can make this a little bigger for you. If you were to take this camera view and we'll just zoom it into the room. I tried to make the mouse bigger. Tara and I were laughing because it's huge, but hopefully you can see it. Alrighty, so this is what the room looks like in standard view. So this, and all of this was done while I was in Texas. So I was able to send her all of this information. She was able to walk through it, play with it, um, everything like this. And this is just a standard standard view. So you can see the you walk through here, 
and you can see all the tile, the granite, all that level of detail that's available. It's really helpful. You can also do electrical plans, line switches up. Um, I removed that from here, but if that was turned on, you would actually be seeing a light switch in the model so they can see how that interacts. Um, but you can go online and get your favorite rugs or your the fabric that you're looking for and bring it in and model that. So the first thing that I'm going to show you how to do is to actually customize a texture because that's actually very, very important. And that's how I get a lot of my very realistic view. So first of all, what I do is you hit this paintbrush. So here I figured it out. This paintbrush all the way up here. It says material painter. If you click on that, you'll get a um, menu that looks something like this. And I have Chief Architect is a software that really works well um, if you or works best for renderings if all your materials are on your actual hard drive. So if you're like me and have everything sitting on the cloud, um, you're not going to get the full rendering capabilities, at least for X9. Supposedly X10 has updated it so you can have that on iCloud, um, but I haven't updated yet because um, all the forums that I'm reading, they're having a hard time with it. So the next thing that you do is you click this button and you will end up getting a screen that looks like this. So I'm just going to base it off of whatever I have in my textures folder, which I made on my hard drive. So all of my custom textures are in a specific file or folder on my hard drive. So let's let's first of all see what we find first. So this is a, I'm pretty sure this is a rug that I manipulated. This is a Laloy rug. And you'll see that it shows up here, um, just this simple image. There's no height variation. There's no real texture. It's just an image. So what then you do to get that is it's called a bump map. And when you pick the bump map and you pick the exact same image, right? All of a sudden you can see there's a bunch of little bumps and variations and everything like that. And let's do stretch to fit. But you'll want to change that based off of it. So inverted means anything that's it's reading as dark, it's going to bring to the interior um, versus if you click invert it, it'll pop it forward and then you can tone it down a little bit, which since it's a rug, it doesn't need to be super, super bumpy unless maybe it's a shag rug. Um, so let's just type this in. And the other thing to make sure to do is the properties. So to let you know, there's all these different options on how you can set the properties in Chief Architect. So because this is a rug, we're going to want to make sure that it's matte, um, unless maybe you've got like a super metallic rug or something like that. But if you click metal, it is going to look like metal. Um, so let's do roughness, have a little high. It's going to add a little bit more texture. So you're going to have less light bouncing off of it, and it's just going to have a little bit more of a fluffy feel. So when you're finished with that, all of your information is in here. Pattern is if you're doing tile or something like that. Um, sometimes if you want to be able to show in your floor plan and you're just doing standard of color, you can pick a color from the image. <laughs> Tara said you only see a teapot. <laughs> Blurry. Can I zoom in? Okay. So now do you see how this select material is showing up in this um, library's material list? So all I do then is click OK. So now let me pull this out. And you'll see there's a paintbrush. 
available. And down in your lower left hand corner, you'll see a series of five paint cans. And sometimes depending on the material, so if it's a paint color, you'll see what looks like a paint roller. So when you do that and you roll out, and let's say I wanna put that rug where this one is, all you have to do is click once you have it set up and boom, there you go. And the, the materials, the textures, all of that is all built in right there. So it may look fuzzy, but when it renders, it's not too bad. Um, and that's how I came up with all these other materials. It's the same sort of thing. So when you're doing stuff like fabrics, let's say, let me zoom out of this so you guys can see these. So to give you an idea, if you have existing textures that you want to work with and you want to manipulate, um, so let's say you do that and you bring a texture image in that you got from, I think this one's hickory chair. So, and you wanna manipulate it because it's not quite right. You click this little rainbow streak all the way up in the corner here. It says adjust material definition. And you click on it on the material you wanna adjust. And you get your teapot back. So this is, this is a hickory chair fabric. Uh, this was, uh, a fabric I brought in for something specific for one of my projects. So you'll see I put the material on the color on there. When you go to texture, Tara, does it still look like a teapot? Can you guys see it? Um, so you'll see there's a scale right here. Oh, really? Okay. Can you see it now? I'm so sorry. Can you see the, can you see the menu now? Um, well, I'm gonna hope you do. So you'll see that this, okay. You'll, you'll see that there's a scale right here and it says three quarter inch scale. And that is the repeat. So if you read, uh, if you look at hickory chair or a lot of fabrics, they'll actually provide you a pattern repeat. And that was the repeat that I was finding worked and recognized it. And depending on the furniture or um, wall or whatever that you're assigning it to, it may react differently. But for most things, you can put the repeat that is specified on the swatch that you're getting um, right into Chief and assign it that way. So you'll see that I have the textures files in here and they're both in here as a bump map. And uh, then, so let's say that I don't, I want it bigger. So what do I do? I, let's put it at 18 inches just so that you can see the difference. So here's what it looks like now and let's click okay. There's, there's the new, well, that looks like you're going to jump into a haystack right there, like a, I don't know, um, an apple seed bag. So if you really are looking for that look, then it works perfectly for you. But I think most of us aren't too crazy about it. All right. So the next way that I work it, let's move this back. I'm just going to control Z that. So how do you set up a ray trace in this? So ray trace is the difference between that and standard view. So if you were to look up here at this little arrow or the all these little things, you'll see standard, vector view, glass house, do, do a tone, technical illustration, painting, watercolor, and line drawing. Uh, line drawing literally looks like a sketch. Um, but then you'll see the this little camera right next to it. 
And if you actually click on that, that's your ray trace camera. That's where you set up all these different standards. So you'll see that I have a few different options here. Um, but let's do launch assistant so you can see it in a little bit more detail. You should see this window right here. I'm hoping you guys can see it okay. And uh, you'll see there's indoor, outdoor, high quality, and quick quality options. So we're just going to do quick real quick so that uh, you can see what you can get out of it. And then there's different options. I normally, I found that if I use the active window size, I get the highest um, resolution. It doesn't matter um, if I want it to be a specific image size. But 72 um, pixels, if you know anything about photos, how that works, pixels are how many of those little dots that you'll see. So generally, you want to have a minimum of 150 um, is my basic. So most of my clients, when they get a preliminary rendering from me, they're getting in at 150 DPI um, versus my final, final renderings. And this keeps you in many cases from getting what a lot of renderers are calling kind of sparkle, which are a lot of little dots that show up. Um, I put it at 300. So for this purpose, we're going to keep at 150 and we're going to click continue. Okay. So then I actually go in and I edit this even more because uh, there's a lot more to the options than just those three windows. So first of all, you're going to want to turn on ambient occlusion. It really helps balance all of the lighting. It brightens it up. It helps read it. And then enable envi environmental light outside. And I usually actually turn that up to about five um, when you don't really get the definition. And I do that with uh, the direct sunlight as well. And then you want to turn on photon mapping. And sometimes compute caustics works for me, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but we're going to click on it and see what happens. Let's click OK. And then, then we click retrace. So what you'll see is um, you will see this. It comes up to preparing for ray trace exporting. And when that happens, it's just reading all of your finished files. So a good way to keep it so that if you've got multiple floors or multiple rooms and you want it to ray trace faster, turn off all of the lights in the other rooms. If you're able to turn off put all your furniture on a separate layer, do all of those sorts of things and turn all of it off that's not visible in the view. Those are just things that the computer isn't processing in the background because it will. So it'll just help quicken that even faster. So right now, since I didn't do it, it's, um, it's reading all those materials. But needless to say, when you get to that point, you will see that. So while that's exporting, I'm going to show you how to send um, the floor plan of this into layout. I guess it needs to export. OK. So here is the floor plan. We're going to send it to a layout, which I have set up for you. And you can set it up by doing new layout. So all you have to do is click this button all the way in the front, and it looks like a rolled out scroll or a rolled out set of CDs, and you click that. Um, okay. And you can set the dimension or the scale that you want your drawing to be based off of your page size. So let's say we're going to do a quarter. It's probably going to be too big, but we'll see. And generally, I... Click OK. And you'll see it goes right to the layout. Everything that's visible goes right to it. So let's say that that's too big or we don't want to show the garage in it. So you can just trim the, sc the screen. Uh, it's pretty simple. Let's check on this ray trace. This is going to take a little longer. Whoops. Is that working? Alrighty. 
Well, we'll go back to that maybe at the end while it's processing. So, alrighty. So while that's working, let's just finish this, this up. So if you would like to learn more about how to do this and you're more of a DIYer who has um, who has all of who has chief architect, I'm sorry, um, I'm actually offering a training package for Ivy members at $399. You'll get three sessions of 50 minutes each. And if you know a little bit about chief architect and you've played around with it and you're not quite sure, it can be a pretty organic session where you just ask questions and we share the screen and we work with it. If you really want to get down to the nitty gritty and learn how to render or learn how to do construction drawings and do those sorts of things, um, we can do that too. So I'm pretty well versed in most aspects of Chief Architect. So I'm ho not hoping, I know I'll be able to help your answer your questions. If you're interested in just my rendering or virtual design assistance, I charge $75 an hour and IV designers receive 10% off of their first invoice. So um, that can really add up and I feel pretty confident that I can help you. So either way, I would love to hear more about what you guys are all looking for and whatnot. So, before we get to these questions, I just want to thank Ivy so much. You guys have, again, changed my business and more or less my business model. You've really helped me develop where I want to go and who I want to help. So thank you very much. Uh, Tara said she was going to add her my email so you guys can email me. You can find me on Facebook or Instagram uh, in the information listed below. So. See, see how that already. Well, that's not working. Okay. So while that's going on, maybe we'll just answer some questions. Um, Regarding being an hourly designer, this is from Jordan. How much more an hour are you worth than being able to do sketches and render based out of Orange County? Regarding being an hourly designer, how much more an hour are you worth with being able to do? I'm sorry, I'm not quite sure what you're trying to ask. Um, how Will Kelly be talking about certain program software or just renderings in general? Uh, this is specifically Chief Architect, if you've noticed. So uh, I, I, there is a link that I can send you. I did look into um, the difference between Chief Architect and SketchUp, and I can tell you that this web link they go pretty in depth at the differences between SketchUp, AutoCAD, and uh, Chief Architect. So hopefully that gives you more of a preview. Is the video cutting in and out? I graduated from Savannah, this is Bridget, uh, in 2011. So I've been working professionally for about seven years. So. And then Bobby asks, is there a specific version of Chief Architect you recommend? Is this a downloadable software or subscription based? What is the cost for a single user and are there classes available to shorten the learning curve? Thank you. Well, I'll be able to help you if you're interested. Uh, the Chief Architect is available for subscription and I actually would advise people who are trying to decide whether they want to go in that direction. Uh, to actually subscribe to it. It's $200 a month, but it's a lease to own subscription. So what that means is you, I'm gonna go back to this. What that means is you can, um, for every month that you are 
working and paying for their subscription, you are paying to own it. So to give you an idea, I subscribed to it last March and I was paying monthly. And then a couple months before Christmas, I actually got an email from Chief Architect, not to say that they do this all the time, um, but they said, hey, if you finish out your subscription and buy it right now, we'll knock off 300 bucks. So that's kind of a nice incentive. Um, the learning curve, I think someone also asked how long it took me. I've been actively working in Chief Architect for almost three years. Uh, before that, I worked at worked in Revit. I, that's what I learned primarily in architecture school. And but it's worth it. It's from my point of view, it has really streamlined so much of what I'm doing. I'm able to do a lot of quality control with it. My clients are able to see everything. So it's an investment for sure, but um, like most good investments, uh, you get a return. So uh, are you able to use specific products from specific companies in the renderings, i.e. an exact sofa from Pottery Barn. And that's from Bobby as well. Um, Bobby, you can. Um, you can actually import uh, furniture from uh, you can actually import stuff from SketchUp's 3D warehouse. So that's actually not that hard either. So depending on what you you want the piece of furniture to do, or if it's a light fixture, if it's just a piece of furniture, you can usually download it from the 3D warehouse and literally drag and drop it into the software. If it is a uh, light fixture, then I generally save it to a folder, import it in specifically as a light fixture, and then you can assign um, how you want it to interact with things. Um, and then Jen says, I find renderings to be so fun to work in, but extremely time consuming. How you price out your services for renderings, knowing that you need to provide several different versions of renderings, draft, revise, final. I, um, I generally charge hourly. So the level of detail that's requested then, uh, will dictate how long that takes. Uh, but truth be told, the renderings are really quick that are drafts and revisions. I don't send anything that takes very long um, until the very final. So until the client turns around and says, that's perfect, that's what I want, go for it, then I send it. And usually um, my computer can process a really nice rendering within 30 minutes. Um, and that's because I invested in a very high powered computer uh, because I knew what I needed from it. So how does Chief Architect compare to SketchUp? And that's from Gretchen. Um, Gretchen, I'll be honest, my level of understanding of SketchUp is um, using it for topography export during architecture school and then getting furniture from the 3D warehouse. Uh, they didn't teach SketchUp uh, at SCAD, at least when I was there from what I'm aware of, I took Revit classes. So I'm not fully versed, but if you follow the link I added to, um, to the comment section, that, that blogger goes into pretty good detail about it. What, uh, Jessica asked, what version of Chief Architect do I use? Um, this version is um, X9, and the only reason I haven't upgraded, well, there's two, is because I've heard there's some bugs in X10, so people are having a hard time with renderings, and since most of what I do is based off of that necessity, I'm not touching it yet. Um, second, I have uh, regular clients that, um, rely on our files to go back and forth because I do uh, drafting and rendering and uh, I'll send the clients to them. I see it as you're paying for that and if you own Chief Architect, you're gonna wanna work in it. So you're more or less hiring me as a virtual assistant and I'll send the files to you so you can play with it if you have it. Um, and so she hasn't updated it yet. Uh, a couple of my clients haven't. So uh, until we all get together, until I say, hey, this sounds good, let's go for it, it's not gonna happen. 
Um, how much is the program? $200 subscription. I think it's about $2,000, everything up front. Where will you post and compare the different programs? That is in the comments section. I think uh, I think Tara reposted it for you. So I'm going to go back and real quick share the screen. And so you guys can see what this ray trace looks like right now. So this is what the current ray trace looks like. Um, this is 11 minutes into the ray trace, and this is pass number two. So to give you an idea, in general, I usually go to pass 10, um, so unless it's a really quick rendering and I really just want a client to just double check everything before I invest a lot of time in it. So, and like I said, this specific model has a lot of detail in it so that I didn't turn off. So it's still processing everything upstairs as well and all of the tile in the kitchen behind us, all of those details. So, but at least this gives you an idea. And then the other big question is how do you export this? So let's say that this got to the pass and the level of detail that I wanted it to be. I then click this button up here it looks like um like a photograph print and it's got like a bunch of little mountains and whatnot with a red arrow if you click that button you'll see a let's just do desktop you'll see a bunch of all of my files so you can see how my folder is set up and you can just say let's say test and generally what I actually recommend from my experience, if you change to have all your files be PNGs, they're going to be much higher quality. They're going to be bigger files, but they're going to look significantly better um, than a JPEG. So then we just click save. So then you will see it now right here. And so you can drag this file. Um, a lot of times, most of the time I bring it into Photoshop and uh, fix a lot of the lighting and the exposure and whatnot. Uh, I see it as you don't pay your professional photographer to give you raw images, because um, sometimes there's definitely things that need to be fixed and exposure that needs to be corrected. So I do the same thing. So are there any other questions? Uh, we have about seven minutes left. Oh, here we go. Uh, Shannon asked, I currently work on a PC and I'm looking to upgrade. Mine is about seven years old. Um, do you recommend a specific brand? Well, that depends if you're upgrading to uh, another PC or a Mac because the I don't really know PCs that well. Uh, my screen is a Dell and I'm absolutely loving it. Um, but I, I work primarily in a Mac and I specifically picked a Mac Pro, um, which is the desktop computer. It's not the Mac, um, Mac Pro that you're seeing where everything is integrated now that became available in the fall. Uh, the difference is that Investing in Mac Pro, it's more expensive generally up front, um, but I don't have to put everything in it immediately. I can actually uh, upgrade it as I need it. So as long as you invest uh, initially in a really good uh, video card uh, and a really good processor. So, uh, but you know who helped me really well? If you call Mac, they have a business section and they really, really helped me. And I did a lot of research. Um, but you're more than welcome to email me and I might be able to help you um, specify some stuff. But it was, I bought a refurbished Mac Pro and it was awesome. So are there any other questions? Here we go. Where do you go? Okay, Amy asks, did you go over how to import from 3D Warehouse? If so, um, I'll watch replay. No, I did not, but I'm offering training sessions that I can show you all how to do that. Um, it's pretty simple. It's literally, you go into uh, the 3D Warehouse, I'm assuming you're saying SketchUp, 
and you download it and as long as you don't want to assign it to a specific type so if you have a wall sconce and you want it to act as a wall sconce um then then you need to formally import it otherwise if it's a sofa and you literally are like oh i can just drag and drop it you can literally just drag and drop it and it'll plop right into your model and you can just change the dimensions so um I would show you guys, but we literally have only four minutes left and I don't think that's enough time. So let's see. Brandy said, I use Revit for everything. How is this in comparison? I have found that I feel like I am working harder for simple drawings, et cetera. How does this compare in, simplic in simplicity and timing? Um, it's Depends on how the level of detail that you go into with your drawing set, Brandy. Um, I've actually found it is very easy, um, but if you're doing formal millwork drawings, it's probably pretty similar. Uh, you're, you're, you can still pull a section like you would with Revit, um, but then you're still going in there and sometimes you have to fix line weights, uh, not all the time, uh, but super close up ones sometimes you do. It just depends on um, your personal company's standards, uh, graphic standards. So, um, anyone else have any other questions? No? Uh, well, to reiterate, I am providing uh, training services if you are interested in uh, learning more about Chief Architect, uh, they are priced at $399, $399 for IV members. You get three 50-minute sessions, and I will work with you directly. You can contact me through my email, which Tara has uh, provided all of you. And uh, I do want to let you know I am going on vacation this Friday, until, and I'll be back at my desk um, April 23rd. So if you have any projects or you're looking for rendering services and you want to make sure that you're in the loop and um, and your projects in my wheelhouse before I go on vacation or before I start getting emails, uh, I would email me before Friday so we can get that going for you. So, but again, I really want to thank Ivy. I want to thank Tara and Lee uh so much for helping me and putting this together and coordinating all of this i want to thank all of you guys who i talk to and work with every single day on the ivy facebook page the ones who've reached out to me through the discover page which i'm located on um you guys have really helped me make this a possibility and uh i couldn't have done it without you so thank you very very much so Hopefully you all are going and having an awesome lunch now, or if you're in California, drinking coffee. But thanks so much, everyone. <laughs> Bye.